everybody and welcome back to cooking and kids in today's episode I'm excited to take you sailing in San Diego's harbor it's a beautiful cool afternoon and the wind is just perfect for easy sailing This is a great way to have relaxing and yet active afternoon in nature. Sailing is lots of fun, but it also takes effort, which means everybody will have to do their part. Spending time on the water always works up an appetite. Few things will taste better after a cold day on the sea than a homemade soup. All right, kids, so in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make excellent seafood soup. I'm sure very few of you have ever tried anything like this. Probably most of you would not even dare to take a spoonful of this, but nevertheless, I'm gonna show you how to make this because maybe when you grow up, you will have the opportunity to try seafood soup and because you saw this video, you might actually take a chance. I don't believe there is such a thing as a kid's food and grown-up food. With that said, I'm purposely making this dish so that you can see how it's done because this too is a kid's food. My grandma used to make all sorts of fish soups and I learned to love them. A good bowl of soup deserves a slice of a homemade bread. So, to make our meal complete, we're also going to make a fresh home-baked bread. With that said, let's get started and thank you for joining us for today's episode of Cooking and Kids. Sailing is a great passion of mine. I only wish I was introduced to it earlier in my life. And because I like it so much, I try to introduce this sport to my kids very early in their childhood. Sailing and spending time on the water has enriched our lives immensely. Many wonderful memories were made, not just for us as a family, but with our friends as well. This is definitely a kind of sport you want to share with others, which enriches your social life. San Diego is a beautiful city in Southern California, nestled right next to the Mexican border. Cool Pacific waters attract all sorts of winds and breezes, which makes this area ideal for sailing. And who doesn't like to play in a wind, get a little silly, goofy, and just have some fun?
San Diego Bay is a natural harbor and a deep water port located in San Diego County, California, near the U.S.-Mexico border. Because of its deep waters, San Diego Bay is a home to a naval base which hosts approximately 60 Navy ships, making it the workplace for approximately 48,000 military and civilian personnel. Our only job today is to make sure that we stay out of their way. Our little crew consists of all kinds of helpers and everyone is eager to assist. This is a great time for everyone to practice and get the feel of the wind. Michaela, who is a certified sailor, is taking over, and I'm just going to sit back and assist and see how she does. It's all the same. No, the other boat is like opposite. Okay. Oh. oh, yeah, the speed. <laughs> You're all right, this is bad up. <laughs> we just lost the wind and I'm going to try to keep it calm and cool and let our young captain figure out what went wrong. <laughs> like, who is that mass bandit? The pirate? <laughs> I've been accused of being a bad boy today. I have too many experienced kids on a boat. They're giving me a heartburn. God is listening to me. I think it was that pirate. Being on a boat with kids always makes me a bit nervous, especially when they are overly confident like Michaela always is. San Diego is known as one of the cleanest cities in America, and it's known for its perfect temperatures. Over the course of the year, the temperature typically varies from 50 to 77 Fahrenheit and is rarely below 44 or above 84. And because of this, there's no shortage of fun in this beautiful city. Water sports are especially popular in San Diego. You can pick anything from surfing to kayaking, paddleboarding, sailing, fishing, snorkeling, scuba diving, or you might even decide to go whale watching. Young people are particularly close to the ocean, and one of their favorite things to do is to spend the day on the beach or to go surfing. San Diego is known for perfect surf breaks, creating lots of opportunities to match the perfect wave to any skill level. People from all around the world travel to these shores to experience California's perfect surf breaks. Like this evening, you can see hundreds of them waiting to catch their ultimate wave. There is so much more that I could share about California beaches. But for now, we're gonna go and finish our sailing trip so that we can go to the kitchen and I can show you how to make that special fish soup.
All right, kids, so we're back to our soup, and I'm sure that lots of you are looking at this particular dish and are saying no. But as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna make this for you, if not for the sake of convincing you to try it, but at least I want you to remember that there are such dishes in this world. To make a good fish broth, you need a good fish. And this morning I went to the store to pick up a good uh, salmon heads. Unfortunately, they were sold out and this is all I could find. So I think we will manage with tilapia as well. Although tilapia is not my favorite fish, this is all I could find this morning. And this is what we're gonna use to make a strong fish broth. In addition to fish, we're gonna use the mixture of other seafood, like shrimp, clams, mussels, and a little bit of octopus. Vegetables and spices will play a key role in bringing the flavor to this particular soup. We will experiment with some spices which you kids will not ordinarily eat in your food. But before we focus on our soup, I'm quickly going to make the dough for the bread because we want to have nice, hot, home-baked bread ready when our soup is done. You know, stuff like this does not look most appetizing, but this is going to give us a very good fish broth. The store that I went to this morning always sells fish heads, and that's what I like to use for my broth. But since they didn't have it, we're going to do what we can. In addition to fish, we're going to use all sorts of different vegetables and spices. Some of these spices might be entirely new to you, but keep your mind open because these spices will give the soup its personality. A good broth calls for um, a good onions and celery. So we're going to go with a half a head of, um, of a large onion and about three sticks of celery. Okay about a teaspoon of uh, black and white pepper, salt for your taste. So I would say probably about a teaspoon for now. And uh, we're gonna need some water, maybe some carrots too. Let's do some carrots. And these are washed, unpeeled carrots. So for now, we have onions, celery, carrots, uh, garlic, bay leaves, salt and pepper, and fish. And this will give us our basic stock. Once we're done with that, we'll drain it, and then we're gonna go back to creating a uh, personality, if you will, for this soup. And which means we will bring a lot of spices, and we're gonna add more seafood, and then I'm gonna show you what else will go into, into this soup. We'll add some water and bring the broth to simmer. Today I'm making this special bread with uh, dry onions, sesame seed, and poppy seeds in it. This would be a great addition to our soup. Dough is nice and warm, and it's uh, ready for baking. While growing up in Serbia, my mom and my grandma would bake fresh bread almost daily. So to this day, I crave that freshly baked bread flavor. And I think that's the reason nice I thin. continue to bake my own. This is going to be wonderful. We can, have, we can put a little bit of olive oil on the bread. We can maybe make a little dip or create sandwiches with this. Because the soup will be nice and lean, although it will be hearty and full of uh, vegetables and meat, fish meat. Uh, the bread will kind of complete this dish. The broth is almost done, so I'm gonna wrap up the dough preparation. And, uh, before I bake it, I wanna let it sit maybe another 10-15 minutes, just to rise once, once again. And a little bit more olive oil. And I also wanna add some of this a uh, mixture of onions uh, and uh, poppy seeds and sesame seeds. 
It looks so, so good. I love the colors. It's this rich green olive oil and black poppy seeds. It's just so beautiful. We had a perfect day of sailing. Weather was absolutely phenomenal. But it's time to bring the sails in and to return back to harbor. There's nothing like that feeling you have after a hard day of play or work. Your body feels tired, but your spirit just feels good. We're gonna finish up tying the boat to dock and then my friend Elisa will serve a hot chocolate to kids. The whole idea behind today's sailing was to take kids into nature and engage them in something that's good for them. Learning a new skill, playing with the wind, being in the open water with friends, and simply just keeping them away from devices. We need to figure out the ways to keep our children being children and allowing them opportunity to socialize with their peers in a healthy, safe, and happy manner. A trumpet from the local base is sounding the end of the day. This was a perfect ending to our little sailing trip. This is an exciting part for me because now we're gonna create the soup's texture. And so I'm almost um, going to make like a almost a stew of vegetables and herbs on the side. And then when we are done with this, we're gonna pour the fish broth in it. Preheat half a cup of olive oil and a half a head of large onion. Let the onion cook on medium high while you chop about two sticks of celery. Here comes two sticks of celery and we're gonna let this uh, cook until it's golden brown. A good pinch of salt. I have about four cloves, large cloves of garlic in here. I'm gonna fry it just a little bit before I add the mushrooms. While onions and celery are cooking, we're gonna pre-cut mushrooms and a half of a large tomato about five large mushrooms. And now we can start slowly adding our spices. I'm just gonna let this cook for a little bit, have mushrooms um, soften up, and then we'll start, we will start adding our spices. Mushrooms will need a few minutes to soften up, and while they are cooking, we're gonna finish up our bread. I'm cutting the bread in this particular pattern because I remember doing this from my mom. She said this will make lepinha break easily in pieces. Lepinha is in an oven and we are going back to our soup. Celery, onions and mushrooms are getting golden color. We're gonna add some chili pepper. Some black pepper too for taste. And the rest of the seasoning is pretty much to your liking. I'm adding a little bit of basil. Just a little bit of oregano. This is about half a teaspoon of each. Half a teaspoon of cumin. All right. It's smelling so, so, so good. I'm gonna reduce the fire a little bit from hot on a medium. And well, I'm also adding half a teaspoon of turmeric because I want to have a, a nice rich color that will work with the uh, uh, red of tomatoes. So I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste. And I would say about two tablespoons. 
Okay. I gotta have this nice, thick mixture of herbs and vegetables. And now I'm gonna add one cut of tomato. Good. So when you start with a, a base like this, I mean any kind of broth that you add to a dish like this, it's pretty much bound to turn out to be a good dish. Once herbs release their aroma, we're going to add the rest of the seafood. Back on high temperature and now we're going to dip in, in our broth. You cannot go wrong with the soup like this. You have a rich broth of fish and vegetables, and on the top you have a mixture of wonderful herbs and additional vegetables, which will bring this soup to exceptional taste. Our broth looks so good, it looks so rich. At this point, we're gonna just fold all these ingredients together. So what I'm trying to say is don't mix too much. Just to bring all these wonderful flavors together, combine them, and just make sure that every piece of the seafood is covered so we'll in this rich to broth. Add broth. Until we reach the desired consistency of our soup. All that's left to do is to let the soup simmer, which can take anywhere between three to five minutes, depending on your taste. Afterwards, we're just gonna finish it with herbs. Here comes the finishing touch. And um, I should mention that once, uh, once you start adding broth to your soup, uh, it doesn't take more than three to five minutes to finish it off, because we don't wanna overcook the, um, the seafood inside, the clams and shrimp and so on. So the soup is done, we're gonna turn, it, turn the uh, stove off and let it set, sit for a little bit or until our bread is done. California's coastline is also known as a Golden Coast and it stretches whole 1,264 miles on the west side of California. A true paradise for ocean lovers and those who enjoy ocean sports. Surfing is definitely one of the most popular water sports around here. It's a great sport for any age, especially for youngsters. And with just a couple of days of lessons, you can pick up surfing moves yourself. I like to challenge and encourage my kids to try new things. But the trouble is that very often they will challenge me back to try to do the same. Easier said than done, but I do try to show up for these challenges and in this case, this is as far as I could get. Kids had so much fun watching me try and all that I could think after it was done is what did I get myself into? Sports are a wonderful thing and so is the good food. So let's go back to see how our bread is doing and let's dish up this wonderful soup and give it a try. All right, for all of you watching out there, I would like to know what do you think about it now? Does it look good? Does it look like something you would eat it or not? For whatever it's worth, I highly approve of this. Not only that it's a homemade and a healthy soup, it's also one of the spoon foods which I believe we need to bring back. Dishes like this are seldom served in a modern homes. Partially, it's a lack of time or the skills, cooking skills in particular, but often it's just the culture of eating which changes with every generation. In my program, I try to reintroduce this old way of cooking and the lifestyle because I believe that it's far healthier than what most restaurants and fast foods can offer today. Our soup is ready to be served, so we'll just touch it up with a little bit of olive oil and just a little bit of a balsamic vinegar. 
And here comes something that everybody in Serbia likes to do. We're gonna add a little bit of parsley. The bread is still very hot, so I'm gonna try to break off a piece for this soup. The recipe for this particular bread and many different types of breads can be found on our YouTube channel under Vlada's Place. Our lifestyles and culture changes almost every decade. Humanity is rapidly embracing technology while leaving behind important life skills that we have been passed on through generations of humanity. My goal and the mission of this program is to remind you how important it is that we stay connected to each other and to nature. And that no matter what comes our way, the family and the community should always be on the first place. Thank you so much for spending time with us. We loved sharing this episode with you and we can't wait to share our next episode because we are taking you up high. We are going straight from the sea to the sky. Uh, my son and I are going for the first flying lesson. So this is super exciting and we're finally going on a journey that I started like 35 years ago. So it's going to be exciting. We have a beautiful weather. It's just absolutely ideal. Cold, sunny, calm day. So off we go. It's going to be lots of fun. When I was 18 years old, I enlisted in a former Yugoslavian Air Force. Only few girls were allowed and none of us was allowed to be a pilot. So we had to choose a different profession, which was within an Air Force. I never expected the same love and passion for flying will find its place in my son's heart. In the next episode, we're gonna take Marco's first flight and we're also gonna find out what does it take for young individuals to become pilots. The most beautiful thing about being a kid and being young is that there are endless opportunities out there to make your dreams come true. We'll see you in our next episode and until then, I wanna remind all parents to feed your kids well, keep them away from devices and let them be kids. <laughs>